welcome to lecture 6 of module 4 and last several lectures we have been discussing about the convective heat transfer correlations for different kinds of geometries, different kinds of configurations flow through uh, a device, flow over a device and so on. And this lecture we will discuss on again a convective heat transfer correlations correlations for flow across tube banks. Okay. Now, this is a very interesting, this is a very interesting and important uh, area of study. Uh, as we understand that uh, there are many applications for this kind of uh, application of heat transfer uh, uh, from or to the tube bank. As we know, uh, there are several applications like uh, recovery of heat from flue gases and that flue gas will be passing across a bank of tubes in which some other fluid, cold fluid will move and that cold fluid will gather the energy uh, in the form of transferred heat. Uh, from the flue gas. So, that is one uh, typical example. Similarly, in case of boilers also, uh, when we have water tube boilers, okay, then in that case also the bank of tubes they get energy from hot combustion gases. So, these are uh, typical in the uh, b b typical areas of uh, heat transfer, even we can see that uh, air flow over tube containing refrigerants in an air cooler. Okay. There also we can see that there are many tube banks uh, are the, the tubes are there in a bank or in a, in a, in a typical arrangements and then heat transfer is uh, very important that takes place over there. So, that that is why uh, we should understand that uh, how to take care of such situations uh, in this uh, lecture uh, we will see that. Okay. Now, this arrangement of the tubes that can be uh, different ways it can be arrangement, but there are some typical regular arrangements we can say so this is uh, there are two typical arrangements it possible one is called inline arrangement another or uh, regular arrangement inline arrangement another is a regular again but is a staggered arrangement uh, we can see that like uh, if we draw Similarly, the other one is like this. And here, this and the here. like this. There are two arrangements I will just draw. So, suppose this is one tube here, uh, this is another tube here, this is another one tube here, this is another tube here like this. So, these are all uh, tubes are placed in uh, like a it is like a square pitch arrangement. So, these are called they are all in line, these are called in line arrangement. and this is a number of rows. So, this side number of rows and this is the deep, how much deep, this many rows deep, this many rows is there and this many tubes in deep. Okay. This is the deep and this is the rows you can say, this is the rows and here we can say that say this is the flow of a fluid that takes place. So, we will say that this flow is say V infinity, free stream velocity there is no uh, impact of the wall of the tubes on the fluid and say this 
So, if you say that this is the center point, I am sorry this diagram should have been made little better. So, center to center distance, if we say this is say S t suffix t and again this diameter to this diameter, this is say we will say that S l the uh, uh, transverse direction and this is in this direction, these are the distance between this and uh, diameter of any particular say if I say that this is any particular tube is the diameter is d. Okay. This is in line tube rows and this is it is depth here and here this is called staggered arrangement we will discuss. An inch So, we can understand here that this is like this, this is here and this will be here okay. and then we will have another row here, this will be here and this will be here. So, like this, so this will become now the staggered arrangement okay. and we will say that, so this tube to this tube distance, this is the center to center distance is say S t again and uh, as we said that this distance would be okay. This will be S L between the uh, depths. Okay, so this is the distance, and this is the distance between the rows and uh, of these. And what happens is like uh, if you see that this portion is becoming now, uh, we can say uh, S t by 2 and this is s t by 2 and say suppose this is this and this is this. So, you can find out the any fluid flowing like this in this direction. So, this is v infinity it has to pass through this and this these are the areas through which it can pass through and in the in this case in case of inline arrangement it will pass through this. Okay. So, now in two different cases the v infinity terms that maximum velocity. So, when it is coming through this then it is becoming v infinity that is that free stream velocity, but as soon as it enters into the uh, tube bank what is happening is uh, once it is entering into the tube bank it its area of flow at certain point is be, it is becoming decreased and in this region it is becoming the uh, uh, this area is becoming the uh, minimum area and here in this row zone the velocity will be the maximum velocity. Similarly, in this case here whatever is passing through then it has to pass through this and through this. So, therefore, this is becoming the zone and this is becoming the zone of interest where uh, the area is uh, gradually decreased and to a minimum value and so velocity through this portion is becoming uh, the maximum velocity. So, therefore, it will be assumed in this case. Uh, so, if we see that from if we maintain the continuity in that case, in that case what happens is uh, for inline arrangement what we see is that V max into that continuity. So, continuity is that volumetric flow rate into the area the so, area will be S t minus d that is the available area as we have seen that uh, in the previous diagram uh, into the height is equal to unity. So, this is becoming that volumetric flow rate per unit height and then this will be equal to uh, V infinity which is coming at a free stream velocity into S t for unit height. So, therefore, V max in the case of inline arrangement it becoming uh, V infinity into S t divided by S t minus d. So, we can see that how the maximum velocity is increased with respect to the free stream velocity in case of free stream arrangement. Now, if we go for a uh, staggered arrangement, we can see that again in the similar way if we write V max into here it will be uh, S t by 2 whole square 
plus S L whole square this whole to the power half okay, minus uh, D. So, this is becoming the area into unit height, height is equal to unit, then it becomes that. So, this is the this becomes the free passage okay, and this will be equal to V infinity into S T by 2. So, so, what we are doing is in the previous diagram, we are just considering only one part. So, this part, say so consider this. So, this into this, okay, this is S L and this is S T by 2. Okay. So, we can find out S T by 2 square plus S L square whole to the power half is equal to this minus the diameter. Okay. So, this becoming the uh, derivation. So, therefore, S T by 2 whole square plus S L square whole to the power half minus the diameter that becomes the effective length passage for the fluid to flow and in, in unit height if it is considered then that will be the uh, flow area for the fluid. Okay. Now, so this way we can find out that V max equals to uh, V infinity into uh, S t by 2 divided by you can write as uh, S t by 2 whole square plus S l square okay, whole to the power half minus d. So, this way we can find out the maximum velocity. Now, the question is why we try to find out this maximum velocity there would be uh, if we require to find out uh, the Reynolds number based on maximum velocity then we may require this imputation or this informations. Now, uh, how to find out this a uh, value of heat transfer coefficient under these situations when there are tube banks whether it is inline arrangement or staggered arrangement under those situations how to find out the heat transfer coefficients. So, one case that is Grimson proposed proposed a correlation which is uh, similar to Macadam's correlations as we have uh, seen previously and it is a very general uh, form of the correlation which says that H d by k f f as we have discussed already it is uh, uh, representing the film temperature. So, the properties has to be evaluated at film temperature and we know the film temperature is the free stream temperature plus the surface temperature wall temperature by 2. So, arithmetic average of the free stream and wall temperature by 2. So, we know already T f is equal to T w plus T infinity by 2 and we know free stream temperature means the temperature of the fluid free stream and uh, why the effect of temperature boundary of the tubes are not there and T wall is the temperature of the tube wall outside surface wall. Okay. And this arithmetic mean is nothing but the film temperature and we have to find out all these uh, physical properties at that temperature. So, H d by k f is equal to C is constant into uh, R e. So, it is V infinity d is the tube diameter into rho f by mu f. So, we have it is n uh, to the power n into Prandtl f to the power 1 3 and here I just wanted to say is that we can see that Nusselt number again is if I write in, in the other way uh, uh, this implies that Nusselt based on diameter and evaluated at fluid uh, free stream temperature is C Reynolds based on diameter and evaluated at uh, fluid uh, film temperature. Uh, into Prandtl f to the power one third. So, this gives a, a much better idea or understanding of this whereas, these are the breakup of the Nusselt number and the Reynolds number terms. Now, the question is that C I am sorry this is to the power n C and n C and n are the two constants and these constants are to be found out uh, uh, for uh, different kind of arrangements. Okay. For that there are some standard tables available. Uh, if you just see this table here that module 4 convective heat transfer here the lecture uh, kind of co correlations for heat transfer coefficients for flow across tube banks and this table table 1 says the values of constants of Grimson correlation what correlation I have been discussing for heat transfer in tube banks of 10 rows or more. Okay. 
so when it is uh, 10 rows or more deep okay in that case uh, this this is applicable 10 rows or more uh, deep otherwise the flow may not be uh, proper in, in those situations so if there are number of two we will see that so what happens is here are the, there are two arrangements we can see that one is called inline arrangement this is inline arrangement and here it is uh, the sorry uh, inline arrangement and the staggered arrangements and we can see that st by d and sl by d for different values of st by d uh, we have uh, and for different values of sl by d we can get the values of c and n uh, for inline arrangements and for staggered arrangements so if we refer this uh, table we can find out or complete the correlations that is being uh, provided by uh, Grimson for uh, studying that or finding out the values of heat transfer coefficient. We will take up an example to discuss that. Uh, now that is the problem as I told that that ratio of h for n rows deep to that of 10 rows deep. The previous table 1 was 1 row deep uh, 10 rows deep or more. Now, if the depth of the tube is less than 10, then what is happening? The, the, the flow may not be that way proper, that has to be smooth. So, there would be some corrections for finding out the values of heat transfer coefficients when the number of rows are less than 10. So, this is for again for staggered and inline tube arrangements. Uh, we can see that uh, for when it is 10, then this correction is 1 naturally because the previous table, table 1 was for n equal to 10 and more the number of depths tube depths and if it is less than that then we have to in, uh, put this correction factor to get the final value of heat transfer coefficients according to the Grimson correlations. Okay. So, now if we come back to our uh, 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 discussions again that we have seen that Grimson uh, the, uh, proposed the correlations for uh, inline arrangement as well as uh, uh, inline arrangements as well as uh, um, uh, uh, staggered arrangements and in both the cases uh, there is a constant terminology that is C and N which can be found out from the table and when the number of rows are 10 or more uh, then table 1 would be used and if it is number of row depth of the number of rows is less than 10 then there will be some correction uh, for that heat transfer coefficient values and that should be used from table 2. Okay. Now, if we continue our discussion with the Grimson correlation, we can see that uh, in this from this correlation, the Grimson has also proposed the pressure drop data that is for our information. So, if we see that pressure drop correlation. for flow of gases over a bank of tubes okay. and this is an additional information uh, that is for uh, us and for that uh, delta p equals to 2 f dash uh, g max you can understand that why this max was there g max into n divided by rho into mu w by mu b whole to the power 0 0.14 and here g max is the maximum velocity at minimum flow area that we have already discussed this is the maximum velocity and that happens at flow area and this unit is kg per meter square to mass velocity basically maximum we can say the mass velocity kg per meter square per second. Okay. So, per unit area at minimum area per unit area. So, you can see that uh, we have discussed what is the maximum uh, velocity and at what location that already we have seen. Okay. So, and then rho is equal to um, density uh, evaluated at 
Christian condition. And it is in this unit is kg per meter cube and then mu b is uh, average free stream viscosity or rather I should say that mu is the viscosity of fluid evaluated at T w and T v bar at bulk mean bulk temperature that is the viscosity is evaluated at mean bulk temperature. Okay. Now, uh, one thing I sh should say here that G max as I told you should be is basically nothing but rho into V max. You can see that this is equal to kg per meter cube into this is meter per second. So, it is becoming kg per meter square per second. So, it is the mass velocity maximum at mass velocity at maximum velocity. Okay. Then uh, comes the empirical factor uh, friction factor f is dashed is the friction factor and it is given as uh, 0 0.25 plus 0 0.118 divided by uh, st minus d by d okay this to the power 0 point sorry uh, this to the power 1.08 okay and then we have r e d max as we have seen all to the power minus 0 0.16 fine. So, this factor is given by Jacob uh, okay, and this is for or we can uh, understand that this is for um, staggered tube arrangement. And uh, for inline tube arrangement, uh, F test equals to zero point four four plus zero point zero eight into uh, SL by D divided by uh, ST minus D by D whole to the power 0 0.43 plus 1.13 D by ST. Okay. So, this is a very complicated power sorry And then whole bracket R e d say max to the power minus 0 0.15. So, this becomes uh, the correlation that is being given by uh, Jacob uh, for inline and staggered arrangements. Okay. Now, in addition to this Grimm, so this is what is the Grimm's and correlation uh, for finding out heat transfer coefficient from the tube bands, heat transfer coefficient for the tube bands, heat transfer from or into onto the tube bands. There are some other correlation for example, Joukowskas has given a wide uh, correlations for the wide range of Reynolds number he has presented a correlation for wide uh, Reynolds number and property variations okay. for wide range of R e and property variations. So, according to them, according to Jukaskas, that Nusselt, which is written as H by D by K, here this is the average uh, heat transfer coefficient and that is equal to based on D and K, 
and C R E D max to the power n into Prandtl to the power 0 0.36 into Prandtl by Prandtl w it is a very common type of experiments already we have seen uh, uh, expressions already we have seen previously and here this relationship for uh, all properties all properties uh, except p r w which will be evaluated at wall temperature are at are to be evaluated sorry evaluated are to be evaluated at t infinity free steam temperature where p r w at t w ok. And uh, this applicable for this relationship is applicable for 0 0.7 less than Prandtl less than 500 and 10 less than Red max. We have seen how to find out the Reynolds number, maximum Reynolds number already we have seen and less than 10 to the power 6. So, we can see this is the wide range of properties of Prandtl number as well as uh, Reynolds number for which this correlation will be applicable to find out the values of heat transfer coefficient and for gases. the Prandtl number P r by P r w this ratio uh, can be the ratio P r by w can be dropped that means can be dropped that means we can take the ratio to be 1. So, there would not be uh, much uh, significant changes uh, uh, by P r and P r w. Okay? Now, question again lies here that uh, we have to know the values of C and A in again uh, some tables are being given by Zhukovskas uh, for the for evaluating the values of C and N. We will see this here you can see that uh, this is the these are the values of the constants by given by Zhukovskas and we can see here that it is for inline tube arrangement and for stagger tube arrangement. So, we have the geometry in the left corner, left column is the geometry and then we have the different values of Reynolds number and for different values of Reynolds number, we have the values of C and N and uh, we can see that for different situations, its values are different. For example, when it is Reynolds number is 100 between 100 to 1000, in that case it can be treated as individual tube as if, as if the flow across a single tube. So, we have already seen some correlations flow across a single tube. So, this can be applicable in this case. Similarly, the case for uh, stagger tube arrangements and for when the Reynolds number is relatively high that is 10,000 to 2 lakhs uh, in that under that situation particularly for stagger tube arrangement we have to see the ratio of S T by S L okay? uh, that has to be you see and uh, from that we have to find out the values of constants particularly C and N values are already given. Okay. So, this is what is again when we have uh, the tubes are arranged in 20 rows or more, if it is tubes are arranged in 20 rows or more depth. Now, if it is less than that then there is a correction again for the heat transfer coefficients. Uh, if we see that in that case the correction says that when 20 it is 1 for any other staggered arrangements there are some values given the other values can be uh, calculated from here through interpolations. Okay. Now, if we go back again to our uh, discussions, uh, this is these are the two basic uh, correlations that is being available for flow of fluid across two bands. One is the Grimson correlation and the Zhukovskas correlations and already we have seen how to apply uh, how to use these correlations using different tables being provided for different values of Reynolds number and different tube arrangements. Now, another thing uh, that we should discuss about these correlations which is that uh, which is a very common uh, type of situation is heat transfer coefficient in packed plate and fluid rail, fluidized plate.
heat transfer coefficient in a packed and a fluidized bed. And we know that uh, this packed application of packed bed or fluidized bed is a very uh, very common issue in case of chemical engineers and many a times other than this uh, uh, heat transfer that is happening in the form of say uh, some reaction packed bed reactor and all. Uh, there are some other kind of situations when the uh, there is uh, pack bed is not the packing material whatever is there in case of pack bed this can be a catalyst this may not be a catalyst when there is a catalyst then there will be a reaction when there is no catalyst there will not be any reaction like for example uh, uh, say uh, if it's a catalytic pack bed reactor there can be in the within the catalyst pellets there can be a reaction so the catalyst pore is involved in this or catalyst surface is involved in this kind of reactions. So, they are not only heat transport phenomena is important there can be lot of other issues like mass transfer reaction all these things are involved. Similarly, the for the case of adsorption uh, will be uh, you might be knowing uh, later on this is a mass transfer process where within the surface of the catalyst some material or catalyst or adsorbent it is called some material will enter into and then they may get adhered to the surface thus there will be some heat generation again there will be some heat transfer again, but at the same time there will be a lot of uh, mass transfer operation to be involved into this kind of situations. And not only that it is not the just external surface of the uh, packing material that is involved or the catalyst that is involved or the adsorbent that is involved it is actually some interior uh, pore surface interior surface area interior pores which all uh, and, the, and the movement of the material inside the uh, inside the catalyst or adsorbent materials that uh, play important roles in deciding about the dynamics of mass transfer, uh, energy transport and reaction engineering. But what happens is in the simpler situation, if we consider a simpler situation in that case uh, there is a simple non catalytic uh, bed for example, typical say uh, ceramic uh, saddles, bulb saddles kind of things, rustic kind of things. So, ceramic simple ceramic materials which are placed in as a packing material inside a, a packed bed and there those kind of packed beds are used many a times to uh, arrest the uh, energy of any uh, fluid which is about to be lost. So, that way we can extract that energy from the hot fluid and store it uh, in a packed bed. So, it is acting like a storage body and then later on put some other fluid and get that fluid heated up by that energy. So, what it can be done as it can be used as a regenerative uh, kind of storage device uh, in the packed bed. So, in that situation the heat transfer over a surface is uh, overall surface outer surface of the uh, packing material is very important. So, this is a typical example of flow through a uh, packed bed and heat transfer through a packed bed. Similar kind of things can happen in a fluidized bed where there are a lot of reactions also takes place and uh, in a fluidized bed and then heat transfer also takes place. So, there are many many other issues involved for example, that uh, what will be the film thickness, wha, how is the film, which phase is the controlling. Uh, so, so many issues are there, but still there are uh, a few relationships available at hand just I just wanted to share with this is that first of all is that for packed bed. for packed bed a relationship is that uh, epsilon into stanton into prandtl to the power 2 third okay and that is equal to 2.06 into reynolds uh, dp whole to the power minus 0.575 where uh, stanton we i think we have discussed it is nothing but nacelle by Reynolds into Prandtl okay, and this is called Stanton number then uh, Prandtl number is equal to 0 0.7 here and 90 less than equal to Reynolds based on dp dp is I will come to this it is less than 4000 dp is called Reynolds number based on particle diameter. So, this is basically dp indicates particle diameter. So, 
the packing packing particle diameter of the packing particle if the particle is not of regular surface then it will be the some average diameter of the particle has to be taken into consideration okay and so that is why it's called sometimes it is also called effective diameter of the particle particle for the pack bed and epsilon is is the uh, bed porosity or void fraction and values of epsilon is usually equal to 0 0.3 to 0 0.5. Now, in addition to this there is uh, one more collision uh, that is being available that is available uh, for heat transfer between the fluid and the solid in a fluidized bed. Uh, uh, this is for example, H d p by k again the same thing d p is the particle diameter, H is the heat transfer coefficient, k is the uh, thermal conductivity, this is 2 plus 0 0.6 uh, d p v naught rho by mu whole to the power uh, half okay. and uh, mu C p by k whole to the power 1 third. So, here this V naught already uh, as I told is, is the same Reynolds number which is used V naught is called the superficial velocity ok. Actually in the previous arrangements previous distance also that here this uh, R e d p is given as uh, here I can write that R e d p, R e d p is again nothing but uh, uh, d p into V naught into rho by mu and V naught is superficial velocity. So, we can say that Reynolds number is defined based on the superficial velocity ok and uh, so this is the case for, uh, for uh, fluidized bed. Uh, operation and uh, typical examples for this case is that uh, fluidized bed dryer that is one important thing fluidized bed dryer so this is very important uh, application because in many times we would like to see that uh, some particles are getting dried dried up and many a times that fluidized bed uh, dryer is used for this kind of drying operations and drying operation is the simultaneous heat and mass transfer operation. So, that heat transfer correlations uh, whatever is applicable uh, whatever is written can be used up to find out the values of uh, heat transfer rate uh, from one fluid to the uh, solid body and so on. Okay. Now, this is one and then we, I think we know what is superficial velocity. If we say superficial velocity V naught is also sometimes called as also termed as empty tower velocity it is nothing but if we have a tower like that so suppose this and a fluid has to move through the tower okay now the tower may have some packing may not have some pack packing so when the fluid is flowing like this through the empty tower the velocity is uh, uh, empty tower velocity and when it is passing through a packed bed and in the parallel if we just put it here that another uh, tower say like this and there are some packing materials ok. So, some fluid is going. So, here it will be that V naught and here it will be say V say if I say this is V. So, this V here so this is V naught and here V is nothing but interstitial velocity
interstitial velocity it is basically the uh, uh, velocity through the void spaces interstitious ok. That is why it is called interstitial velocity and we can say that uh, v will be always greater than v naught provided when uh, volume, uh, volume continuity is maintained. That means, when we would like to see the total volumetric flow rate through the towers, if, if we want to maintain the same, then in that case uh, this will become uh, higher than this one, because it has its flow area while going through this pack pit would be less than the flow area here. Here it is empty, there is no packing material inside this uh, uh, pack in, inside the tower, okay. that is why it is called empty tower velocity also. Now, what we will do is, we will take up uh, one problem related to uh, this flow across tube bank. Say, if I say the first problem is problem 1, uh, hot air at temperature say 260 degree centigrade okay, flows across a tube bundle with a free stream velocity of 20 meter per second. Okay. The tube bundle the tube bundle is 10 rows high and 5 rows deep. Okay. Outside diameter of tube is 38 millimeter and the tubes carry water for heating. The tube wall temperature is 60 degree centigrade. Okay. Find the gas side heat transfer coefficient okay, and heat flux to water. So, this is the question. Now, tubes are arranged in an tubes are arranged in an inline manner ok ok uh, then spacing between tubes ok in both the normal and parallel directions to the flow is 60 millimeter. So, basically these are same a spacings means this is S T and S L these are the two spacing which is along uh, in the directions along the direction and in the perpendicular to the direction of flow the spacings is S T and S L these are asked to be uh, 6 millilitre millimeter and also uh, that we can see that uh, the temp uh, hot air the temperature of the fluid is freezing temperature is 260 degree centigrade and it is to be heated 
uh, at 60 degree centigrade ok tube wall temperature is tube wall temperature is 60 degree centigrade so have to find out the heat transfer coefficient ok now and also it is said that it is the tubes are arranged in inline manner so if we try to see the solution then if we try to go for the solution then st is equal to sl and that is equal to 60 millimeter and is equal to 0 0.06 meter and tube diameter is given d equals to 0 0.038 we should be very careful about the unit consistencies so this is uh, 0 0.038 meter and v infinity that the piston velocity is given as um, uh, okay um, 20 meter per second ok. Now, uh, we have to evaluate the properties because as it said that free steam temperature is 260 degrees. So, properties of air at 260 degrees centigrade that we have to find out and if we find out that then rho is equal to 0 0.653 kg per meter cube. So, estimation of the property is one important task for solving this kind of problems uh, and C p is equal to 1035 joule per kg per degree centigrade and mu equals to 2.81 into 10 to the power minus 5 kg per meter per second then k is equal to thermal conductivity equal to 0 0.043 into watt per meter per degree centigrade and Randall is equal to which is mu C p by k is equal to 0 0.684. Now, if we try to find out R e d max, uh, because we would like to, in, we, we will be interested to use the uh, 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 Joukowska's correlation. then R e d max uh, is equal to d d d p or rather d d v max rho by mu and uh, this will be equal to. Uh, so, we have to find out the v max for inline arrangement is little simpler. So, v max is equal to s t by s t minus d into v infinity as we have seen this is 0 0.06 into 20 by uh, 0 0.06 minus 0 0.038. So, this becoming 54.5 meter per second. So, this is equal to d equal to we have 0 0.038 into uh, if we write in the next line it is better to write in the next line. So, this becoming uh, 0 0.038 into uh, 0 0.653 into 54.5 divided by uh, 2.81 into 10 to the power minus 5 and that is becoming 48127. Now, we have to find out the values of uh, n c is equal to how much and n is equal to 0. Point. So, these things we have to do again if we have to do we have to do like this way if we go to that table. So, uh, table uh, before that the table 3 we have to see here. So, it is uh, 48127. So, it is lying in this range inline range. So, 0 0.63 and 0 0.27. So, n is c is equal to 0 0.27 and this is 0 0.63. So, c is equal to 0 0.27 and n is equal to 0 0.63 that we have seen and then uh, by putting the values and the correlations. So, h bar d by k is equal to 0 0.27 uh, red max to the power 0 0.63 into Prandtl to the power 0 0.36 into P r by P r w to the power 1 by 4. And we have said that if we go further then h bar d by k is becoming um, 0 0.27 into 48127 all to the power 0 0.63 into 
0 0.684 to the power 0 0.36 into 1, because already we have seen that for gases that this Prandtl number ratios uh, can be omitted and can be dropped. So, this is basically uh, can be taken as equal to 1 and that way uh, this value is becoming uh, 209.84 and then h bar we are getting as uh, 209.84 into k by d and this is equal to 209.84 into 0 0.043 by uh, 0 0.038 and this is equal to 237.45 and this is in watt per meter square per degree centigrade. Now, our next part of the problem, so we, we could find out the heat transfer coefficient, then we have to find out the heat flux. So, to find out the heat flux, we have to, oh, before we find out the heat flux, we have to see that uh, the tube bundles, it is being told that it is 5 rows deep. So, before we go for the heat flux, we are not through with the age calculations, because it is given that 5 rows deep. But the age values we have calculated for that this value is applicable for 20 rows or more deep. This is applicable for that. So now what we have to do? We have to do correction. So for corrections, age corrected by age bar would be that value, and that value we again will calculate from the table. So here for inline arrangements. Uh, 5 it is 0.92 you can see for 5 rows deep it is the val value is coefficient is 0.92 so we'll go back again we'll see that so this value is 0 0.92 so h corrected h bar corrected is equal to 0 0.92 into uh, 237.45 and this value is 218.45 say watt per meter square per degree centigrade so, this is becoming my corrected value. Now, I can go for calculation of heat flux. So, heat flux says that it is H flux means uh, per unit area. So, area is not important. So, H into delta T that will give you the flux. So, this is equal to uh, 218.45 into the delta T is 260 minus 60 and this is equal to 43.69 kilo watt. So, this way uh, we could find out the values of uh, heat change, heat transfer from a fluid to, uh, 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 to through a tube to another fluid that we could find out that what will be the value of heat transfer coefficient when there is a flow of hot air is there across uh, a tube bank. Okay? And we have seen that how to use uh, the uh, tables being given, uh, we have used the correlations by Zhukovskas. Similarly, correlations by Grimson also can be used, and one can see the differences uh, being generated by use of two different kind of equations for this kind of situations. Okay. Now, uh, uh, next class onwards. So this is so far about the different correlations that uh, we should discuss in case of forced convection heat transfer. Uh, in the uh, next lecture will be discussing uh, something on uh, fluid flow heat transfer analogies, momentum and heat transfer analogy that is very important. Uh, some little bit of uh, analogical behavior will be discussed and, and then from there we will see that many a times without the heat transfer being studied, uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient value can be evaluated. So, we will find out that particular thing from the next class. Thank you very much.